people live in those areas you just knocked down. My neighborhood is there. We do not care. All right, before we get started today, we have a, we have a little addition to the set for the first time in high key low key history. Let's put this up real quick. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty far in the back, but I'm gonna I'm going to trust and hope that that looks any good on camera. Welcome back to Barbie Movie Hour with Haiki Loki in celebration of the live action Barbie movie now in theaters directed by Greta Gerwig and starring Margot Robbie, not sponsored. Tonight we will be watching Barbie Princess Charm School. Released on March 15th, 2011 to generally positive to mixed reception, our movie follows Barbie attending Princess Charm School. Seriously, you guys try writing an introduction for one of these movies, there really isn't that much to talk about, let's just watch the damn movie. Barbie Princess Charm School opens up by showing us that this movie does take place in the fantastic and historic year of 2011, when dubstep was popular and internet cafes were going out of fashion. After a long day of slaving over a hot croissant, our main character returns to her life in the trap house. This is where we're introduced to our movie's protagonists. Emily Willows, voiced by Madeline Peters. She has the same weird obsession that most Americans have when it comes to royalty. And Blair Willows, voiced by Diana Carina. At first I thought she was Emily's mom, but that would mean that Barbie canonically f and we can't have that. So it actually turns out that Blair is Emily's adoptive sister. Blair and Emily have a mother who is terminally ill. I'm not making that up, but the movie also doesn't ever state what she's ill with. It's safe to say that it's something like cancer, but the movie can't say that because it's for kids. I just think it's funny that the characters treat it like she has a really bad cold or something, when in reality she'll probably be dead by the end of the week. Blair promises that she'll work hard to get out of the bad part of town that they live in. I mean, although the outside of the apartment looks pretty shoddy, they have a pretty nice setup going on here. This is a nice ass apartment, and they definitely had enough money to paint the walls pink because I guarantee you they were not pink when they moved in. On the TV, we're introduced to Alexandra Privet, voiced by Morwenna Banks. She's the headmistress of Princess Charm School, where people who are born to royalty are trained to be pretty pink princesses. But they also let one, only one, normal girl, which by the way, normal girl is the term that the movie uses, be trained to be a princess and get to become a lady royal. Yeah, I think affirmative action would have something to say about people of privilege being the only people who get to attend their school. Or I guess affirmative action would have had something to say, but as of writing this video it actually no longer exists. This is Dame Devon voiced by Nicole Oliver. She's the mother of Delancey Devon, a current attendee of Princess Charm School. Delancey is the one who gets to choose the normal girl who will become a lady royal by literally choosing a name out of a box. I know it's a raffle, but holy sh that can't possibly be the most effective or even the most fair way to go about doing this. Unsurprisingly though, because she's the protagonist of the movie, Blair wins the competition, even though she didn't enter her name into the raffle. And as much as I'd like to lie to you and say that it's because it's like the princess military draft where every female over the age of 18 is entered automatically, it's actually even more stupid than that. Blair's sister signed her up six times. Every day. For the past year, yes, you heard that correctly, this 12 year old girl single handedly rigged an election. Hobie Brown would be proud of you. Literally 17 seconds later, a royal limo driver shows up to take her to Princess Charm School. His name is Brock, but he's such a minor character that I debated even giving him this name card. I don't even know if anybody in the movie says his name, I had to look it up on the wiki. Either way, Brock showed up so quick that they either knew who was going to win already and it was rigged the entire time, or he can teleport. Listen, I'm not much of a conspiracy theory guy, but how much do we really know about Emily? Blair insists that she can't go to Princess Charm School because she's just a waitress and she has too many straws in her pocket and too much ketchup on her socks. Yes, that is actually what she says and it is probably one of the weakest reasons that I've heard to not take a life changing opportunity. I've got straws in my pocket and ketchup on my socks. Miss Willows urges her to go to Princess Charm School because it would get them out of poverty. Once again, looking around their apartment, there is no way that these guys are poor. They have so much random 
kind of just lying around here. That is literally a Razor scooter sitting in the background. Oh, and I was wrong earlier. The Royal Limo driver is actually a Royal Carriage Boy. You know, that actually makes a little bit of sense because they could have just given him the Guardian Horse Armor from Legend of Zelda. It is also completely unclear how far away Princess Charm School is or where at all it is even located. They make their way to Charm School in an afternoon. And you have to remember that Blair got off her shift at work earlier in the same day and it's not even dark outside yet. And it seems like they're not even in the same country though, because Blair's house is in the most developed part of Arkansas, but then she travels to the least developed part of England in the same day. After arriving in the palace, Blair is introduced to this dog. The dog's name is Prince, and the dog really likes Barbie, and Barbie seemingly really likes him. But not in like, the white woman way. Don't worry, this is still a kid's film. Alexandra shows Blair around the castle and lets her know that this won't be easy and only 23% of students make it to graduation, which is considerably lower than the American average. So I gotta say, a 23% graduation rate, that's... That's probably on you, right? There are bad students, but this just seems like a bad university. This character is Grace, voiced by Tabitha St. Germain. She's the personal fairy assistant to Blair. Seriously, what the f*** is this place? You're telling me that they just casually have a ton of fairies lying around this university, yet poverty is somehow still an issue at all. I mean, if anything, this just confirms that the 1% are still alive and well in this universe. After Grace shows Blair her princess locker, it causes her to have a run-in with Delancey. Delancey actually f***ing sucks and has a massive case of aporophobia. Delancey hates anyone who got into Princess Charm School based purely on chance and not the cool, normal, and fair methods such as favoritism and nepotism. We're also introduced to Delancey's side chicks here. This is Portia, voiced by Allie Liebert. She's kind of stupid and I don't say that to be mean I say that because she ate a cupcake off of the floor and this is Wakelia voiced by Kelly Metzger she is just as aporophobic as Delancey and is her personal fairy assistant after a quick costume change we're introduced to yet another white woman this is the loud and outgoing Hadley also voiced by Allie Liebert. She's Blair's first of two roommates, her second roommate being the shy and reserved Princess Isla, voiced by Shannon Chan Kent. She's pretty much only here to help the school hit its diversity quota. I don't think she has a single line of impactful dialogue until the third act climax of the film. We're gonna take a second here to establish the fact that there are entirely too many princesses in this universe. Firstly, anyone not of royal descent is specified to be a lady royal, but anyone who is from a royal bloodline is designated as a princess. We haven't met all of these characters yet, but there are six listed princesses on the wiki. But of the characters we've met, Isla, Hadley, and Portia are all princesses. But I ask you this question. Princesses of what? Are they princesses of countries? Even if this is an entirely fictional universe, I have a hard time believing that there are enough countries in the world for there to be a whole school that gets new students in year round to be trained to be princesses. Also, if you're wondering what Lady Royal is, it's just an assistant to the princess. So they send them to princess school, train them to be princesses, and then they just become their secretaries. I'd make a joke about that, but that's actually just the crippling reality for a lot of college-educated women in this country. In the next scene, we're taken to the Starlight Welcome, which is actually a really good band name, so I'm gonna steal that. There are three things in this sequence that are actually important to the plot. All of the princesses get their silly little training tiaras, it's revealed that the royal family, including their infant child, died in a brutal car crash, and there's a conspiracy theory that one of them made it out alive, and Dame Devon is the sister of the now-deceased queen. Moving on, next we get to watch the most important part of being a princess, the ability to stack 12 to 13 copies of War and Peace on your head. Do not ask how they get the books on or off their heads, because the movie doesn't know either. Every time someone has books on their head in this movie, which happens a lot, admittedly. They just cut to whoever they're talking to when the books need to come on or off their head. There is actually a minute-long sequence here of students balancing books on their heads, and it ends when Delancey sabotages Blair's book-balancing skills and is confronted by Dame Devon. For some reason, Dame seems to be taken aback by Blair's mere existence, and immediately tells Blair to f*** out of her classroom. The transition here, though, is so fucking horrid. Where well, you so clearly don't belong. The insane amount of tonal shift between what we just heard and the music is genuinely the wildest thing I've seen or heard 
all month. It reminds me of how my parents would spank me and then come into my room like 15 minutes later to try and ask what I want for dinner and be my friend. Like, I get you're just trying to lighten the mood here, but I need time to process what the hell just happened to me. Later at lunch, Delancey teaches Portia that poor people don't deserve a chance. Seriously, bless Portia's poor soul because she's too stupid to even know how to discriminate. But Delancey gets Wakelia to sabotage Blair for... no reason. But we do get another super funny transition! I have to go! In the next scene, we learn two more important pieces of information. Firstly, Dame Devon also got into the school through the princess draft. And secondly, Blair was adopted because she was left on Miss Willow's doorstep when she was a one-year-old child. That has to be the easiest child endangerment charge I have ever heard of. In class the next day, Alexandra says that she'll tutor Blair because although she really f sucks at the whole princess thing, she really wants to see her succeed at it. So here we get a montage of Barbie going back to doing all the basic princessing tasks, such as extensive amounts of reading, dancing, dress sewing, and full body yoga, and of course, balancing more books on your head. There's also a song called On Top of the World that plays here. It's mid, that's, that's all. After Blair is done with her princessing practice, Princess Charm School finally gets to have a crossover episode with Prince Charming School, which is just like Princess Charm School, but awesome. After Dame Devon kicks Blair out because they're one prince short, she runs into the Aryan Prince. Nicholas. I wasn't gonna put that joke in the script, but the only information that we have on this kid's entire history is that he's from the East, so I think it fits. But I do also think that this kid looks like a Ken doll version of Howard Hamlin, so he's on my good side for that. Because Delancey is the human version of moist socks, she trips Blair while dancing with Nicholas. This somehow leads everyone to just start freestyle dancing for like a minute straight. I don't really know why this happens or why the teacher lets it go on for so long, but Peter Parker does really just be f***ing it up on the dance floor, so I do enjoy this scene. The male students then depart, but it is noted that they'll be back for the coronation at the end of the school year, or in movie terms, at the end of the movie. Sorry, I just need to talk about this for one second. This school is so oddly shapen. It's literally just blocks. It's just geometry blocks. It looks like you could take it apart and fit it into one of those pegboards for toddlers. This part of Princess Charm School goes in the square hole. By the way, I'm recording this video later in the day than I usually do, and I'm pretty sure Nathan just keeps getting nuked by the sun. I- it just happens. There's nothing I can do about it. All of the students are attending a spa day the next day because they're all getting ready to have dinner at the palace that night. But the scene just gives more of a chance for the characters to talk about the legends that exist surrounding the royal family. Notably that the previous queen's crown will light up when placed upon the head of a royal family member. When the students head back to their room, they find all of their uniforms to be torn to shreds. You know, half of me is expecting the dog to just come through the door and start talking and be like, Aw, sawi. I eated it, and then a laugh track plays and they all just forgive him. Though the animals actually don't talk in this universe, which is a pleasant surprise. When I was writing this video, and I saw that there was a dog, I actually went to the wiki to make sure that he didn't have a voice actor. I'm just so conditioned to talking animals on this channel, I guess. But Blair isn't ready to give up that easily, so she takes the remains of their outfits and gets to work. I feel like there's a complete and utter lack of safety in these dorms, no? Like someone walked in, spent maybe 10 to 15 minutes very thoroughly cutting up these clothes and then just walked out without anyone noticing. Even if it was Wakella or any of the tiny little fairy assistants, no one saw or heard this. And how did she even get in? Did these doors not have locks? We get to see the fruits of Blair's labor in the next scene and admittedly these outfits go hard as f but there is no way that she made these from the torn up remains of these same school uniforms. Where did she get this color of blue for Hadley's entire outfit? And where did they get the plaid design for any of these? All the girls take off to go explore the first floor of the palace, where they notice that Blair looks exactly like the previous Princess Isabella, and Prince the Dog is... Well, he's Prince the Dog and is 18 and somehow still wildly active. The girls then piece together that the royal family died the same day that Blair arrived on her mother's doorstep, and that she might actually be the rightful heir to the throne. This would explain why Delancey and Dame Devon treat her worse than Link treats the Koroks in Tears of the Kingdom. Delancey overhears this and is caught off guard as it wasn't actually something she was even aware of. You know, I bet Emily planned this the whole time, that little conniving sh**. 
In the next scene, it is stated that Barbie does live in Gardenia, just the poor section of it. So Dame Devon's proposition is to completely bulldoze the area and replace it with a park. You know, normally this would be a good thing if people didn't live there. Why does she hate these two buildings in particular? Like, yeah, I'm sure it was just to dig at Blair, but that's dehousing a lot of people just to punch Blair while she's already down. It's like shooting someone in the skull with the poison bullet. Like, bruh, she's already gonna be dead anyway. She's got nothing on you. Blair tries to be the voice of reason and let her know that people actually live in those buildings, but Dame Devon just says it's fine because the poor people can just use their Kohl's cash to move to somewhere else. Blair leaves immediately to go tell her mom that she needs to move before she's dramatically killed by a bulldozer like Tootie in the live action Fairly Odd Parents movie. It also should be noted that Dame Devon passes this entire thing off as Delancey's plan, but whether or not it actually is is kinda unclear. It's hard to tell if she's upset because she didn't know the plan existed, or because she just found out that her mom has been lying to her for the entirety of her life. Like, it could well have been her original plan, but after finding out that she's not the rightful heir to the throne, she's having second thoughts, but it's never really explicitly stated why she's upset. After 20 whole seconds of hard deliberation, Blair decides that she's gonna stay and prove that she's the rightful heir to the throne. So Blair, Hadley, and Isla plan to steal the crown that night, but a surprise fire drill happens where Dame Devon has quite the sinister plan. That sinister plan is to get Blair, Hadley, and Isla arrested for burglary and theft, which is kind of wild, right? I think more kids movies need to be like this and have people just get straight up arrested. Brock, who is apparently also the security guard, takes them to their room and finds three necklaces, one under each bed, because although they're evil enough to steal, they figured they should be nice and only steal exactly one item each. Blair insists that they're all innocent, but they can't do an investigation until the day after the coronation because they're just so busy, you know? It's gotta wait until the day after tomorrow. There has to be enough time to like dust for fingerprints or something. Regardless, they're all being detained by Brock until the next day. But now that Delancey has had a change of heart, she gets Brock to f off and decides to be useful for the first time in the entire movie. Delancey gives the group a map of the castle with a route to the vault where the crown is held. But they'll have to find the crown before the next morning before Delancey is crowned queen or she'll have to be queen for life. No takes backsies. Yeah, I refuse to believe there's no exceptions on that. I mean, even a standing president can step down if he or she just wants to not be president anymore. After getting Prince to distract the security guard, the gang just scales up three stories on the side of a castle wall with nothing but rope because it's probably just something they learned in princess training. While making their way through the security, they do the Mission Impossible laser powder thing, and then Hadley just backflips her way through it because once again, it's just what being a princess is about. But I do find the scene where Grace has to help Blair and Isla through to be kind of funny and certainly more realistic. But you know what's also funny? The lack of cameras on this school's property. This is 2011. Camera security wasn't something that was even new at the time. It wasn't even in its infancy. This should just be the normal thing. The group makes it to the vault door, which offers them a password hint because they got it wrong the first try. The hint for the door being the day it all fell into place. And it ends up being Blair's birthday, or more importantly, the day her whole family died in a horrible car crash. That more than implies that Dame has something to do with the death of the entire royal family. But I'm going to ignore that for a second and focus on the fact that the vault, which probably has billions of dollars worth of the kingdom's most valuable riches in it, has a password hint? F off with that! Why? The group finds the crown and manages to get it down quite easily, but they're caught by Brock and Dame Devon at the same moment. So she traps the gang in the safe overnight and attempts to keep them there during Coronation Day. I get that the group was already in the wrong because they were trespassing, they just broke into a very secure vault. But Dame Devon and Brock did just commit false imprisonment, and I don't want to go without recognizing that. In the scene where all the princesses are being crowned, it is confirmed that other countries do exist, but all the princesses just come here to do like one semester of training. So there's roughly 20 princesses and 20 lady royals a semester, meaning 40 princesses a year. There is no way that there are that many royal families, much less princesses in this world. Although admittedly, there's a small chance I'm probably thinking too deeply about this. Princesses could be more akin to mares and the kingdoms are more akin to cities, but I don't really want to give the movie that much credit. 
Regardless, while the gang is trying to escape the vault, Delancey is doing her best as to not be crowned before she can confirm that Blair should or should not be the Princess of Gardania. But just as they're about to crown Delancey, Blair shows up claiming to be Princess Sophia, daughter of Princess Isabella. They fight over the crown for a short while, and just when things look like they're not going well, Prince the Dog shows up for a well-timed Ex Machina. Delancey is now faced with the decision to crown herself, or to crown Blair. She crowns Blair. I, we all know she crowns Blair. I don't know why they're building this up like this. Blair is then revealed to be Princess Sophia, which would be a bigger shock if they haven't been not so subtly hinting at this fact since the 17 mark minute in this movie. Dame Devon also does just straight up admit to the fact that she actually killed everyone in the entire royal family so that her daughter could be princess. But anyway, after that, Princess Sophia gets up on stage and says that everyone is a princess. She also chooses for Delancey to be her lady royal because she's secretly a good person and everyone does the emoji pop. The entire kingdom just seemingly disregards the fact that their standing queen for the last 16 years just admitted to three counts of matricide and one count of attempted infanticide. But I mean, who the f cares about that? Let's just dance. Blair finally gets her dance with Prince Nicholas and Blair's family also shows up to see her. Her mom is also just not sick anymore. This is is because she's rich and everyone knows once you become a millionaire you immediately become immune to any type of sickness. Don't believe anyone if they ever tell you that money cannot buy happiness because this is solid proof that they're lying. Also I know this is just supposed to be a happy ending for Emily but no this doesn't mean that Emily is a princess. She was adopted so get f***ed you little anarchist. The movie is over now but there's just a lot of things that kind of just don't get explained but that's fine because Barbie is rich now and nothing else matters. You know that movie was fun but holy f does leave me with a lot of questions and not a lot of answers, so I'm just gonna lightning round some of those off to you real quick. Fairies just kinda exist in this universe. There's no explanation for that. There's no rhyme or reason. There are just fairies. The only reason I'm really questioning it because, like, what exactly is their purpose there? Like, in school, they basically just serve as... Well, well, slaves. Like, I'd like to imagine they get fairly compensated for their work, but I highly doubt that. Where do these things come from? Where do they live? What do they eat? Do they sleep? Do they like working for these people? All these questions go unanswered. What exactly are the kingdoms in this universe? Why are there so many princesses? And what exactly was the hierarchy of power in Gardania when they just didn't have a princess for 17 years? They didn't have a king or queen either. It's heavily implied that Dame Devon was like the vice queen or whatever the f but I don't think it's ever explicitly stated. And why does not one person even question or gasp at the fact that Dame Devon admits to killing three people and attempting to kill a child? Like, it happens and they just cart her off and it's never addressed again. They don't even say, wow, she'll be in prison for the rest of her life. They just essentially stare at her and be like, uh, well, that was awkward. Well, yeah, she just murdered your entire family, you dip ass. But let's go ahead and score the thing. I'm gonna give it a six out of 10 if you're trying to be a hard ass on this movie. And if you're just looking for a good time, this movie's gonna be a solid eight out of 10. Quite a fun time. Anyway, like always, here is some cool fan art, but while that scrolls, I'm gonna plug my socials, but in a cool way this time. I can't stream movies on YouTube for obvious copyright and legal reasons, but having a Discord movie night seems like a good way for us to get together and have some fun with these things, and also not have to dedicate 30 hours a week to making a video on it. Also, about two or three weeks back, I hit 50,000 subscribers, and I said I'd do a giveaway, and that is finally happening. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a Legend of Zelda, Nintendo Switch, and copy of Tears of the Kingdom waiting back there for one of you guys. So to uh, do the giveaway, you just click that link in, in, the dis in the description, and there will be details on it back there. You just have to follow one of my socials. If you don't use those socials, it's fine. The reason I did it off YouTube is one, YouTube has anti-engagement policies, which I completely understand and actually really respect. And two, you can just unfollow me after on Instagram. I, I would do the same, like it's a giveaway. If you want a chance to win, that's that's fine. Like I, I'm sure my follower account will like half when the giveaway's over and, and I fuck with that. Like I, I, I respect that. Uh, anyway. Uh, we're gonna head out because Nathan's got a bit of a tummy ache and we need to go pick up some Pepto-Bismol. I'm not gonna question that. And I'm just gonna end the video. That's, that's what I'm gonna do.